Open your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, verse 26. This is going to be a fear not message. I know this particular part of the chapter in Luke, most people use these verses to deliver a Christmas message. I'm going to use it to deliver a fear not message. In fact, to those of, of the people back there that are recording this in their notes, label this fear not for thou has not that, that for thou has found favor. Fear not for thou hast found favor. Let's start with verse 26. I'm going to try to get this message done in 30 minutes. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And I know some people read this, especially new Christians, say, well, how could she be married and be a virgin? Well, first of all, you have to understand the process, the Hebrew process, to get married, especially if you're a woman. You first become engaged. A formal agreement was made by the fathers to declare that engagement. The call, the ceremony, which where the mutual promises are made. And then about a year goes by. Where the bridegroom comes for his bride. You mean there's no sexual relationship that whole time? Not in those days, for the most part. She could be espoused to a man, and this man was named Joseph, and still be a virgin. Let's move on to verse 28. Her name was Mary. We know that. And verse 28 says, And the angel came in unto her. Literally, and the angel coming in, to her and said, Hail, let me just read you the verse and I'll go back. Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast her in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Now, some of you might ask you, why is she troubled about that? Well, first of all, something had to happen. Most people preach this story, whether they know it or not, I'm not sure, but they preach this story and they fly by these verses because they think that it doesn't give you that much detail of what really went down with this encounter with the angel and Mary. And the angel came in, or coming in unto her, said, Hell, literally, have joy because of God's grace. That's what the word means. Not hell, or hi, or hello, or howdy. Or shalom even. Or any other word in any other language, including the language that was used here originally, just to say, hello, I'm here. That's not what went down, folks. Hell! Have joy because of God's grace. Now imagine. Something you never, someone you never saw before all of a sudden either comes into the door or suddenly appears and says this to you. What do you think your first reaction is going to be? 
I probably would try to grab something as a weapon and say, what the heck happened here? Somebody's trying to break into my house. And probably try to take a swing at this angel. What would your first reaction be? Hail or have joy because of God's grace. Now that's a very important introduction. Especially when we get down to verse 30. Verse 30 reads, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Why is that an important introduction? I'll get there in a minute. But I want to emphasize this point why this was an extremely important introduction. The angel had orders of what to say. And how to say it. And it's not by accident if you understand verse 30. Not just reading it in any translation that you might have. But what really was behind the definition of the words that were used. That Mary understood. And I believe. She might have been confused for a few minutes, but it finally dawned her, her why. This salutation was given. And I know I'm kind of leading you up to a certain point, and you quite don't understand why I'm getting there yet, but just listen closely. Have joy because of God's grace. It goes on to say that thou art highly favored. Circle that. The Lord is with thee. Circle that. And blessed. Circle that. Thou was highly favored. You know what that means? Graciously accepted with much grace. Write it down there. I don't have time right now to go into the Greek or any other language and point all these things out to you. I preached long enough. We could take my word for it. I want to get this done tonight. Write it down. Graciously accepted with And much grace given. Or graciously accepted with much grace. So let's read it now. Hail or have joy because of God's grace. Because you've been graciously accepted with much grace. Now, if you read this story and read any information that you could find in the Bible or outside the Bible, what puzzled me for years is how did she get to this point? And can we get to this point? Not to have a child. I can't have a, well, I get, nothing's impossible with God, but I can use common sense, folks. I'm not having a child. I don't see any virgins having a child without having sexual intercourse that creates the child in you. That's not happening. And that's not the point I'm trying to make. That's a miraculous event. All on its own. But this message to Mary, does it have any application to us today? Can we tap into it? I'm tapping into it as we close 2010 and move on to 2011. Have joy because of God's grace that thou art graciously accepted. That thou art is not really an original, but let's just read it that way. That thou art graciously accepted and given much grace. Circle that one. You've been graciously accepted. We know that. It's the gift that's given to us by Christ. Can we make that claim for ourselves right now? Sure. If you're trusting and faith in Jesus Christ, then you've been given the wonderful gift of grace. You have been graciously accepted and given much grace. I don't think any Christian that's been a Christian long enough doesn't understand that point. So we could take that first topic and say, we're claiming that in the end of 2000, 
We know that for sure. Also applies to us. What else? The Lord is with thee. The Lord is with thee. Have joy because of God's grace. You've been graciously accepted, given much grace. The Lord is with thee. Listen, I can go to Ephesians 1, 3, 1, 6, Matthew 28, 20, and just give you the same promises, but in different books of the Bible. Given to you by Paul in the other example of Matthew. Over and over in Scripture, you see the same promises. Here is the Lord is with thee. Circle that. Not only are we graciously accepted, given much grace, the Lord is with thee, and then blessed. You have three promises right here. In verse 28, blessed, favor of God, thou among women. And I kept asking for years, never got the answers, but kept asking why she was favored with God. And of course, there's always the super spiritual answers, and I'm not going to bore you with those today. You can go in Christian bookstores and read all about it, if you're that interested. Why was she favored of, of God among women? I'm getting to that. But that's still our promise today. We're favored. If we're in Christ, and we can sell back to the Father, we have been given the gift of grace. We've been graciously accepted, given much grace. The Lord is with us. That's a promise. He will never leave or forsake us. And thou, and, and blessed, favored of God among mankind. Whether you're a man, woman, or child, if you're trusting and faith in Christ, But that still doesn't explain why she was chosen by God to be the carrier of Christ. Why? That word blessed also carries other meanings to it. It means to be spoken well of. Now, oh, that's something I want. That's what Jesus and I referred to it many times. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's to be well spoken of. Write that down. Blessed carries not only a favor of God, but God speaking well of you. And in the process that the Lord is speaking, he also speaks well of you with the intention to bring you, to bring me, to bring us to the desired relationship with himself. That's what blessed means. There's different words for blessed. This ain't the one that I refer to often. You see in the Beatitudes, fully satisfied. No, this carries a different definition. To speak well of us with the intention to bring us to desire relationship with him. To see and provide, by the way, what we need most, not what we desire. See, Mary knew, know, knew what she needed most in her life. That's why it's not by accident. This particular word here, blessed, is used. Fair with God that God is speaking well of you. Write this down. With the intention to bring us to desire relationship with himself or him, to see and provide what we need most, but not what we desire. I know Christians today are taught just the opposite what we desire, not what we need most. Sorry, that's not New Testament or old. Let's move on. And when she saw him, she was troubled. Actually, trouble is not the right translation. Greatly confused is the best translation. And when she saw him, she was greatly confused at his saying. 
and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Like I said, all of a sudden someone walks into your place of abode and tells you, have joy because of God's grace. You've been graciously accepted, given much grace. The Lord will never leave you. You are blessed. You are spoken well of with the intention to bring you closer to God in a relationship with God himself. He knows what you need most, not what you desire. He's going to make sure you get that. Well, there's a mouthful from a stranger. Like I said, I probably would have grabbed something by now and tried to hit him over the head and call the police. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, I'm reading from the King James, and that's beautiful. Just speaking those words is wonderful to understand them. I think it's even going to be more wonderful to understand them tonight after I'm done with them. Because I'm going to show you what it really means, if you don't already know. And the angel said unto her, Fear not! By the way, places in the website under the Fear Not archives. I told you there's hundreds of the Fear Not messages. I just can't get to them all as quickly as I would like to. But I'll keep preaching the Fear Not messages. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found, circle that word found, favor with God or grace with God. Thou hast found grace with God. Why? Why Mary? Why Mary? By the way, the Catholics have one thing right. Now, I don't believe in the prayer. And I don't believe Mary distributes grace as they see it. She was given grace. She was not to be a distributor of it. But I remember... As I used to pray the rosary, Hail Mary, full of grace. They got that right. Now they went on to interpret it and give it an additional meaning that does not apply, and it's dead wrong. But at least at the first part of that prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace. I want to be just like you, or I want to have the same benefits you did. That's declared here in Scripture. Should be the next line of that prayer. But Hail Mary full of grace. Boy, do they got that right. I just want to point that out to you. I don't know why that just popped in my head right now, but maybe God has a reason. Maybe some Catholics would listen to me tonight. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found grace with God. Circle that word found. You know what it means? By the way, it's an active tense in the Greek. That means she was not just sitting around as a couch potato. Once saved, always saved mentality. I don't have to do anything except sit here and just reap in the benefits whenever God wants to bestow them on me. No. What the word means is found is searching. Now you have the understanding why. That angel, when he suddenly appeared, said, Have joy because of God's grace. Mary, you've been graciously accepted, given much grace. The Lord is with thee. You are blessed. You've been spoken well of. He has seen your desire in you because of your pursuit in him. You're searching out the things of God. These are the things you don't hear about, Mary. Because the message has been hidden. Nobody thinks when they read this verse, the word found has that much significance. 
It's the glue that holds all these verses together. Because now we know why Mary was visited in the first place. What I've been telling you, keep searching, keep pursuing, keep that fire alive in you. Keep having that passion. You see that on the homepage of our website. Fear not, Mary, for that house found or that has searched. And you have grace with God now. You have grace with God. And in your pursuit or searching of him, he found someone, and only one ever existed. A pursuer of him to carry his only begotten son. Why? Because she was seeking and searching. Not seeking and searching that she would become the physical mother of Jesus by carrying him in his, her womb. No. She never even thought this would probably even happen to her. She probably, this, these thoughts never even came into her brain, folks. All she was doing is pursuing God, seeking God, searching for him. And that's all God needed to see to bestow this type of grace, this amazing grace, this graciously accepted by God, given the gift of grace, not just a little bit, but much grace, as the language dictates. As the language dictates. She was highly favored. Highly favored. The Lord was with her, and she was blessed because of her seeking and pursuing of him. Now, this story is nothing new. Here we have the encounter of that in the gospel. Go to Acts chapter 8. I'll read through it quickly. I'm running out of time. But you see this story. You've heard of it. Chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth thou down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Philip, arise. I got a commission for you. I need you to go be somewhere. And he arose and went. And behold, the man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all of her treasure and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He's making the return trip back, back home. I guess he stopped. Either was driven in the chariot, the chariot was large enough, or he stopped and just started reading. And he read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah instead, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? It's amazing. When Mary was seeking and pursuing and searching, God sends an angel. Now, he had a specific purpose for that. But here, when he found someone that were pursuing him and wanted to know more about him, he sends Philip, this Ethiopian eunuch. Think about it. I'm sorry. When you truly have the passion and desire to seek the Lord, oh, I already know I'm saved. Let me tell you, that's great. But a saved person knows that he needs to grow in the Lord. He needs to grow in the mind of the Lord. And that is a work in progress situation day by day. You don't arrive at any one point in your lifetime 
and say it's, it is finished. It's a continuous work of progress. It's a continuing molding of the clay process that Christ does with you. I believe if I went to the Lord tonight, God will send someone, if you're listening to this ministry on a daily basis, to replace me or send you to a place that will continue your journey and develop your Christian growth in the path that he wants to take you in. I'm a firm believer of that. To believe that that can't happen is to toss out these stories then that God cannot provide. Go back. Don't go back. I'll read it to you. An angel came unto her and said, Hail, or that have joy because of God's grace, because thou art highly favored. Highly favored. To give grace. God has given the grace. Unearned your grace. Unearned merit. Nothing you did for it. God gave it to you as a gift. Because he saw Mary seeking. I promise you, you're seeking Jesus Christ. Because that's who you're supposed to seek now. He will not leave you empty. He will not leave you without guidance. And he will not leave you without someone to teach you the word of God. Period. Do I believe that? Absolutely. Let's continue the story. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him, read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understand thou what thou readest? He was reading Isaiah 53, 7 and 8, by the way. And he said, How can I, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired, the word there is, he wanted to Philip to sit by his side to aid in the understanding. And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture would he, which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his shearer. So opened he not his mouth. Like I said, if you want to read it, go to Isaiah 53, verse 7 and verse 8. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? Remember, Isaiah is saying this ahead of time. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Guess what? That's what my responsibility and that's what your responsibility is in the Great Commission. You think I will let this year end, not remind you you're responsible for what others here, including yourself, by the way, but others here, Pertaining to the word of God rightly divided? You didn't think I was going to remind you going into 2011 what your responsibilities are? Now, some of you didn't need it, but most did. Or most, most do. To place in his humiliation, his judgment, verse 33, was taken away, and who shall declare, and who shall declare his generation for his life? Is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh of the, the prophet this? Of whom speaketh the prophet this? See, he couldn't make heads or tails out of it. Of himself or some of other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same script, scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The open door was there to preach about Jesus. I had a message from a faithful hearer of faith. Who was talking to a man? And he gave him direction where to find the word rightly divided to this website. Well done, is all I can say. Christ is saying, well done, good and faithful servant. And Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. But what started this? What started the story I just read to you? And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Why? 
because the Lord's ever-seeing eye is everywhere. And when he sees someone seeking, pursuing, searching for understanding of the word of God, what do you think is going to happen? Just the same as what happened to Mary and why she was chosen. Philip was given orders to travel to go meet this Ethiopian eunuch and say, and a big shot probably, using today's terminology, he was in charge of the treasury. But something turned him on, probably in Jerusalem. And as he was leaving, he had to stop. He had to read. He had to search. The burning desire was there. And when Christ sees that burning desire, he makes the move. And I don't care where you think you are, you could be in the remotest place on earth. He's going to send someone there to get the message to you. Now, it might be a, a real person, live, right in front of you. It might be this ministry on a radio or on the Internet or some other source. But he's going to get the right message to you. I firmly believe that. I don't think anyone chooses in this ministry by accident. Well, the Spirit draws. That's right. The Spirit draws many folks. Christ paid the price for all. Now, just because the Spirit draws doesn't mean that people respond. But the ones that do will not come up empty. And he will guide their path. And what else happens? When this searching, this seeking, this finding grace with God comes to pass. Well, you know the rest of the story, but I want to jump over to verse 35. The angel answered, I'm back in Luke 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, because the angel is pretty much saying, Prior to that, that she's going to conceive in her womb and bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. Glad you got that message, knowing you never had any sexual intercourse with a man. And the angel answered and said in verse 35 unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come unto thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Shall be called the Son of God. When you pursue, when you're seeking, when you're searching. Well, what if they don't repent? I have never met anyone that pursuing, searching, and seeking Christ not come to an understanding that you have to repent and understand what his blood did for you. And once you have that understanding, guess what happens? Then the power of the highest, the Holy Spirit, referring to here in this scripture, shall overshadow thee. Overshadowed. And the Septuagint is the same word they use for the cloud in the desert, for instance. Or the cloud coming into the Shekinah experience in the Holy of Holies, and so forth. And in circle, it clothes you with something from above that was promised by Christ as he was departing this world before he'll come again, what we call the second coming. He didn't leave us comfortless. He sent some one to comfort us, and that's the Holy Spirit, an extension of him. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. You go down to verse 37, and that's where I'll close. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Uh, you need to correct that also. And the Mary said, Behold, the duli. The dulos is a bond slave, a male servant. A duli is the female servant or female bond slave. 
And Mary said, she put herself in the right position, understanding that just went down as the bondservant of God. And Mary said, Behold, the bondservant of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Verse 37, for, God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Literally, if God says it, it is not impossible. Write that down if you want to take it literally. If God says it, it is not impossible. Kind of reminds you, similar to that so be it faith, that pisteo faith. God said it, it's good enough for me, so be it. If God says it, it is not impossible. Well, I want to remind myself, I don't know what your impossible situation is, but I know the Lord is there. That's a promise. Keep pursuing. Keep searching. Keep seeking. He will be there. He loves that passion. He loves that fire in you. He wants to be pursued. And because of that pursuit, and because of what Christ did for us on the cross, we can claim tonight, have joy because of God's grace. Because he has given us your, his grace. He has graciously accepted us, given us the gift of grace, and just not any gift, a grand, much grace was given to us. The second promise, he is always with us. The Lord is with thee. The Lord is with you tonight. You might seem lonely, but he's there. Start talking to him. Start seeking and searching. See if he doesn't respond. I challenge you. And we have been promised to be in that same camp as Mary. Blessed. To be spoken well of by the Lord. With the intention to bring us to desire relationship with him. That's a wonderful promise all on its own. Because he knows what we need. He's going to provide it. What we need most, not what we desire. And what we need most is grace. And the Holy Spirit. That clouds us in with his presence which directs our journey as they as the cloud did in the desert when the children of Israel left Egypt to guide them in their journey so they would not lose their way well that promise is still here and that promise comes in scripture as the overshadowing Holy Spirit. You think it's impossible? Well, God's word says, if God says it, it is not impossible. I want to end 2010 by saying, if God says it, it is not impossible. For your life, for mine, and for all others, that eventually listen to this message somewhere down the line in an archive sermon site, website of ours, on our website. And you probably need to remind yourself of these truths throughout the year and go back and listen to this message. To go back and claim all these wonderful promises that we're going to marry, that we could claim for ourselves also. And whatever you're facing, if you're seeking, searching, if you're seeking and searching and desiring Him with a passion, he will overshadow you with his Holy Spirit. And whatever you face in this coming year, say it with me tonight. If God says it, it is not impossible. He knows what you're going through. He knows how to get you through it better than anybody else, including yourself. That's why you need to be rightly dividing the word of God and know what to claim and how to claim it. Because wonderful benefits come with it. He'll never leave us or forsake us. We've been graciously accepted and given much grace. Be 
Be unto me according to thy word. Was Mary's last words in this encounter. Well, be unto me, O Lord, according to thy word. And make that claim also for your life tonight.